And now, the Mole Mystery Theater, presented by M O L L E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. Good evening. This is Jeffrey Byrne, welcoming you to the Mole Mystery Theater, the program that presents the best in mystery and detective fiction. Tonight's mystery by Walter B. Newman is entitled, Took Them to Death, and stars Everett Sloan. It might well have been called Murder Under the Big Top, since it has a circus locale and is bright with the color and glitter of circus people. But the most powerful element of our mystery is its leading character, Nick Arnold, a strange, ugly little man who discovered that the best way to rid himself of his enemies was to talk them to death. But first, let's hear from a man with some friendly words on the subject of shaving, Dan Seymour. Friends, there's big news about Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. Yes, it's Mole's sensational Get Acquainted offer. Your chance to try Mole and to get a supply of Persona, America's deluxe razor blades. That's right. Five guaranteed Persona precision blades that sell ten for a dollar. Now, these famous Persona blades make a perfect shaving companion for Mole brushless shaving cream. Later on, we're going to tell you how to get in on this special Mole offer. So, don't miss it. And now for tonight's Mole mystery, talk them to death. Starring Everett Sloan. That morning, I decided to talk to death all those between me and what I wanted. Words had always been my only defense. What other defense have you when you're weak and small and ugly? Now I would take the offensive. I would talk, and they would listen and die. That morning, I was standing as I often stood just inside the entrance to the big top, watching Annette rehearse. I love to watch trapeze artists. To feel for just one moment the freedom, the serenity, the swooping exultation they experience at every performance. I watched Annette swing back and forth, back and forth. What a lovely girl. I hungered for her. But what had I to offer her? Nothing. But if I owned the circus, yes, I, Nick Arnold, if I were owner of the circus... Nick. Snap out of it, Nick. Uh, What? Always in a fog. Listen, I got Peter the Great outside. I know escape artists. Is his wagon ready for him? Well, you didn't tell me, Duke. You told Lee to take care of it. Lee! Come on, Nick. Uh, fine part of that loopy rum hound is. Gets half the profits and leaves me all the grief. He'd be lost without you, Duke. This show could be a real moneymaker if I didn't have him around my neck. Why doesn't he sell out to me like I ask him? You're right, Duke. He's no help to you at all. Oh, Duke. Oh, Nick. How'd the Arnold brothers? What's the matter, Duke? You mad about something? You lush, you rum dum. You a star act joins the outfit and there's no wagon ready for him. Oh, that. I'm, I'm sorry about that, Duke. I guess it slipped my Oh, mind. really? You're sorry, Howard? Well, that's just dandy. Just dandy. Incredible. Now, what's it gonna be in Just time? because of a few that words, a grown man cowers like a whip dog. Ready, huh? Now, look, I'm finished. One of us has to get out. I want you to sell your half to me. Sell? Oh, you know I can't do that, Duke. This show has always belonged to my family. My grandfather, my father. I I broke into show business with this circus. Turn it off. And I don't want to hear any more about how you were once a lion tamer. It don't impress me. Well, a fine lion, Sammy, you must have made. You get clawed once and your nerve breaks and you don't go near a lion for 15 years. That's not true. I was a good lion, Sammy, and I'm not afraid of the cats. I'm not. No? 
Why did you give it up then? Well, because of my my other responsibilities. Yeah, running this show and looking after my wife and raising my son, Robbie. And Throw it I... to the sparrows, will you? You don't run this show, I do. You don't look after Ruby, she looks after you. Yes, yeah, she's a better tamer than you ever were because she's got the marks. Oh, for Pete's sake, don't leave me something, okay, will you? Okay, you won't sell out to me, then buy me out. Oh, no, do, please. What's going on here? Oh, Ruby, Ruby. I said, what's going on? I'm talking to you, Duke. Ruby, he, he... I still have a performer out there waiting for a wagon. All right. I'll, I'll see about that right now. Ruby? Yeah, go ahead, Lee. I'll take care of this. All right, Ruby. Uh, no dice, Ruby. He won't buy and he won't sell. No, I told you he wouldn't. Duke, don't bear down too hard on him. Oh, I'm sorry. Working with him is like trying to write with a post office pen. I lose my temper. I only ask because he doesn't have long to live. I got him to take a physical examination in Temple, and his heart's in bad shape. He doesn't know. So be patient. Okay. You look tired, baby. I've been trying to work Jezebel all morning. It's no use. She's turned killer cat. We'll have to shoot her. Come here, give me a kiss, huh? Sure. I uh, guess oh. I better be... Oh, it's only Nick. You're going to fade into the background once too often, kid. Go on, go on, beat it. Oh, sure, sure, Duke, sure. Hello, Nick. Oh, hello, Annette. Where are you going? To my wagon. You want to walk me home? Yeah. Say, was that you down there watching me rehearse this morning? What'd you think? Oh, you're getting big time. If I owned this show, I'd raise your pay and give you star billing. And that's not Here all comes I... comes Robbie. Pretend you don't see him. Hello, satin skin. Got a smile for Robbie? You grab my arm again when and I'll... When are you going to give I'll... me a tumble, baby? Come on, Nick. <laughs> so long, satin skin. Oh, I hate that, that mama's boy. Just because Lee and Ruby are his folks, he thinks that... He sits opposite me in the mess tent and tries to play footy-footy under the table. You know, I wish your brother Duke do would do... Do you want me to uh, take care of him? You... Oh, I, I mean, oh, forget it, Nick. I can take care of myself. Oh, look, they're rolling a new wagon next to mine. Yes, we, we have a new star act, Peter the Great, escape artist. Oh, well, I'll see you later, Nick. That night, sitting in the dark on the steps of my wagon, I saw Ruby and Duke pass arm in arm. A little later, Robbie, on his way to town. I finished my cigarette and stretched. It was time I started for Lee's wagon. Hello, Lee. Huh? Oh, it's you, Nick. Have a drink? Uh, no, thanks. Oh, what's that? A photograph album? Yeah, I'm just looking through some old pictures. Look, here's me, the first day I did my line taming act. Oh, good-looking costume. Yeah, wasn't it? I, I was a big success. I stopped the show cold. Oh, I bet you did at that. Here, have another drink. Yeah. Here's a, another picture, Nick. That's me and my cats. How many did you work? Thirty at one time. Greatest thing you ever saw. You, you think Ruby is good with the cats? You should have seen me. I, I, I taught her everything she knows. I'm as good as I ever was, too. And uh, if you want to know something, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of going back into it. Really? Sure. Never would have left it, you know. But I didn't have more important responsibilities, running my show and bringing up Robbie and taking care of Ruby. Well, it's true. You'll see. You'll all see. I didn't lose my nerve. I didn't. It's a lie, Nick. Sure it is. Sure it is. Uh, drink up. Thanks. <laughs> you think... You could handle uh, Jezebel? Jezebel? <laughs> I could have that cat purring and rubbing against my leg in five minutes, Nick. I told you, I used to work 30 at one time. 30? My goodness. How did you do it? Well, I... Do. Here, give me Ruby's whip. Here. Thanks. Let me have that chair. Ah, the cats would be all over the cage, see, and the band would be playing as soon as I'd come in. Rhonda would take a swipe at me. Back, Rondo, back, you ship, back. And he'd snarl and he'd go back, and then I'd start building them at the pyramids. Hush, you three, huh? Hold it. 
Now, you five, on the platform. Up, Nero, up. And that ain't all be all pyramided and the audience screaming itself crazy. Yeah, yeah. Ha- have a drink, Lee. <sighs> You know, I, I sure would like to see you in action. Oh, any time, any time. Well, uh, how about now? Huh? With just Jezebel. Well, I... Why not? Sure. Let's go, then. Absolutely. And and you know something? After I tame Jezebel, I'm going to have a little talk with Ruby. She's been getting out of hand lately. <laughs> you, you know how some women have to be tamed. Well, I'm the guy who can tame them. I can tame anything. Look at her. Back and forth. Back and forth. Huh? You Jezebel. Wouldn't you like to get out of that cage, huh? Mean looking, isn't she? Huh? I think she's beautiful. Well, they don't come too mean for Lee Duncan. You watch me tame her, Nick. You know something? I, I, I remember the way it used to be. The ringmaster would say, Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest of them all, Lee Duncan. And I'd be standing there in that spotlight holding my whip and wearing that red and gold costume. Nick. Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest of them all, Lee Duncan. Yeah. Huh? Eh? Jezebel, you? Go ahead, Lee. Sure. Sure. You watch me. I'll show you how a man does taming Nick. Eh? Take a good look, Jezebel. I'm going to teach you. Hey, what am I doing here? Now. Oh, back. Jezebel, back. Back. Follow me. Roman! This is Jeffrey Barnes, mystery fans. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Two of tonight's Mole Mystery, the story of a man who has a unique way of getting rid of his enemies. Meantime, here's Dan Seymour to tell you all about Mole's special offer. Here it is, friends. Mole's big get acquainted offer. And we'll send you five guaranteed persona blades, single or double edge. Remember the end panel from any package of Mole with 10 cents in coin, plus your name and address, to box 19. That's box 19, New York 8, New York. So get Mole and send for your blades tomorrow. And now back to Act Two of Talk Them to Death, starring Everett Sloan as Nick Arnold. We buried Lee next day. What was left of him? A month later, Duke married Ruby and became 100% owner of the circus, thus proving that everything comes to him who waits. The money made by exhibiting Jezebel, the man-killer, almost paid for the new banners and posters advertising the Duke Arnold Show. The Duke Arnold Show. I'd see my brother staring at those four little words on the three sheets for minutes at a time. His eyes would be filled with the wonder and the glory of them. Something like souls on the road to Damascus, I imagine. And what were they after all? Just words, printed words, ink on paper. Words. I love words. Yes, Duke was a happy man. Except for a few little things. Are you happy, Duke? Do I make you happy? You know you do. Oh, I love you, Ruby. I'm crazy about you. I know you are, Ruby. Sometimes it scares me. Scares you? I was thinking about Lee. What about Lee? It's all right, though, honest. I know you did it for me. Did it for you? Wasn't it you that did it for me? What are you trying to... Well, you know I was with you, and I know... Well, no, I... no, 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 wait, wait, I... wait, wait, wait. Don't talk, don't talk. Let's forget we mentioned but... it. Talking about it could take us someplace we don't want to go. But I feel... Should... <laughs> So they dropped it. 
But they were never, ever quite sure about each other after that. Never absolutely sure. Then Duke began to drink, and his temper grew murderous. I could kill you, you little punk! Mom, Mom! Stop it, Duke, stop it! What's Robbie done now? I'll tell you what, you... He's made three of the coach kids hand in the notices. Believe him, because your little Robbie's been throwing his weight around. Did you do that, Robbie? Oh, Mom, I was only having a little fun. Fun? Is that what you call it? Put me to the trouble and expense of bringing three more girls down if I can find them? You, you stay away from my performance, you hear me, Patty Waste? You let them alone, all of them. Stop it, dude. And if I catch you annoying Annette again, dude, I'll... stop it. Calm down. I can hear you all over the line. Well, let him. I'm the boss. Yeah, and how did you get the B-boy? Why, you... Duke! Well, he... Oh, nuts! I enjoyed watching Duke stew. I would have liked it to go on and on. But what words was I to use and upon whom? And then I thought of Duke's temper and a name popped into my head. Robbie. Yes, Robbie. Ruby's darling Robbie. Next afternoon, I was in the office wagon writing some letters. Hey, Nick. Seen Mom? Uh, what did you say? Have you seen Mom? Oh, no, no, but I saw someone else. Come on in. You're just the man I was looking for. You're looking for me? What about? I have a message for you. From Annette. Satin skin? No kidding. What? You're a lucky guy. She wants to see you in her wagon after tonight's show. Probably wants a date with you. No fooling, huh? (laughs) What do you know about that? Well, it's about time. That's all I got to say. It's about time. Boys, hey, wait a minute. Are you sure she said Robbie the last time I spoke? Uh, that's the way some women are. They like to play hard to get. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Nick. i see you around, huh? Yeah, don't mention it. So long. In her wagon. After tonight's show. <laughs> Words. <laughs> I followed Robbie to Annette's wagon that night. Hello, satin skin. Here's your Robbie. Oh, beat it, or I'll tell your mother on you. Look, I got a box of candy for you. Five bucks worth. Doesn't that get Robbie a little kiss? <laughs> go away, little boy. Come here. I said go away. I mean it. <laughs> Hard to get, huh? I know. But you don't have to pretend with Robbie. Now, how about the kiss? <laughs> you can only see how funny you look trying to trying to act like a man of the world. Now, go away, Robbie. Go away. Come on, give me a kiss. Stop. Now, don't come any closer. I'm warning you. I said... Oh, why, you little... Let go! Let go! Let go of me! Get out of here! Get here. Robbie! Do... I told you, Robbie! Don't, 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 please! Don't, don't, please! Don't, don't, please! Don't, don't, please! I ran after them as quickly as I could. In the lights of the wagons all down the line, I could see Robbie running, dodging, stumbling over ten pegs, looking over his shoulder, tripping over ropes, heading straight for Ruby and Duke pounding after him. When I got to her wagon, I saw Robbie inside, cowering behind Ruby while she was trying to hold Duke off with a gun. Mom, I'm going to get him. I'll make him go away, will you? Mom, get daddy in the Duke, you killed him! No, no, Ruby, why? I couldn't help thinking how easy it is to kill with words. Robbie strangled to death. Duke shot to death, Ruby charged with manslaughter, bingo, three birds with one stone, and I still had the stone. It was nice to be boss of the Duke Arnold Circus. There was only one cloud on my otherwise blue horizon, Peter the Great. There wasn't anything definite between them as yet, but it was plain that Annette was interested. 
If it were possible to describe Peter the Great in one word, that word would be egotistical. It wasn't hard to think of the words to use on Peter. You wanted to see me, Nick? Yes, yes. Sit down, Pete. Uh... Pete, I-, I was wondering how you'd react if Annette were to share star billing with you. She's become a big drawing card. Why, sure, sure. Give it to her. She deserves it. I don't mind. In fact, I'm glad for her. Nick, uh, is she becoming a bigger draw than me? Well, she's right up there with you. You know how it is. Customers always like something new and different, and she keeps adding new stunts to her routine. Yes, yes, I know. She's, uh, she's good, all right. Do you, uh... You think I ought to change my routine a little? No. No, you've got a good routine, but uh, if I may suggest... Why, certainly. Go ahead. Your act isn't sensational enough. What you need is a flash stunt, something that will make the yap's ears flap back and forth with excitement. (laughs) Have you got any ideas? Well, I was thinking, could you manage an underwater escape... Underwater? Yes, something like this. You're handcuffed, and then after a thorough search for hidden keys, you get into a crate. The crate is sealed and lowered beneath the surface of the water. A couple of minutes later, your head appears above the surface. You're out of the cuffs and free of the crate. Something like that. Could you do it? Why, sure. Sure to be a snap, I think. It's just a question of shucking the cuffs. The rest is only trimming. Okay, let's do it that way. You're sure you can handle it. I don't want you to try it if it's too dangerous. Maybe you're not good enough to escape from... I can escape from anything. Mm. Well, all right, then. I'll start working on it right away. Our next stand is Scudderville. There's a bridge spanning a pretty big stream right across the street from the fairgrounds. And I think... Hi, You will see Peter the Great do the impossible right before your very eyes. Folks, you have just seen your chief of police search Peter thoroughly and handcuff him. Tell the folks, chief, did you discover any keys, picklocks, or other concealed devices? I did not. There you are, folks. Now step into the casket, Peter. Lie down and we'll close the lid. All set, Pete? Yeah. You check the winch and the rope? I don't want any slip-ups there. Unless this casket is anchored to the bridge, I'm a dead pigeon. Don't worry about that. I attended to it personally. Okay, then, Nick. Just remember, if I'm not above water in three minutes, pull me up fast. Hold it, drummer! And now the casket containing Peter the Great is being lowered into the raging rapids below. There you are, folks. He is now below water. In a moment or two, the casket will be resting on the bed of the stream, 34 feet below water. Notice the strong pull of the current. See how the rope from the casket to the winch is taut and strained. And notice the, the rope snap. This is Jeffrey Barnes again. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of Talk Them to Death. Now a word from George Putnam. Here's something to keep in mind if dandruff is hurting your attractiveness. Many methods are ineffective for combating dandruff because they merely do what plain water does, that is, remove loose dandruff. They don't destroy the germ called Pityrosporum ovale that many outstanding authorities say is the cause of the most common kind of dandruff. For real relief, this germ must be destroyed. Now, a scientific product named Double Dandarine fights dandruff effectively because it kills this germ on contact. Double Dandarine is so remarkably effective that even in many stubborn cases, results have been amazing. And the reason for Double Dandarine's astonishing effectiveness is a special ingredient, an active antiseptic that's so wonderfully efficient many hospitals use it. In Double Dandarine, we call it Alzan. So don't waste time by trying to combat this dandruff with ineffective methods that actually are no better than plain water. Use Double Dandarine instead. If you're not satisfied, you'll get your money back. Get Double Dandarine tomorrow. I turned my back on the crowd and walked away from the bridge a happy man. Of course the rope had snapped. 
I attended to it personally. Yes, I was happy. There is no greater satisfaction than that afforded by the knowledge of a good job well done. I had the show, and it would be only a question of time before I had a net also. Meanwhile, there was work to be done. A letter to Billboard informing that Bible of the amusement world of the unfortunate occurrence at the Scudderville Bridge. Then an advertisement to be inserted for a new escape artist for the Duke Arnold Circus. Peter! Peter, how, how did you... Oh, no, 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 Peter, listen to me. Let me explain. I, I, you're upset and, uh, and excited, and I, I understand what you must think, but, but let me assure you that I... I'm going to kill you. No, no, please, please stay where you are. Listen to me. Listen, listen to me. I, I, I'll give you half the show. I, I'll give it all to you. No, don't come any closer, Peter. Peter, the show belongs to you. The show I killed me for and Duke and Ruby and Roddy. Listen to me. Listen to me. Can't you hear me? No. No. Listen. Keep them away from me. Keep them away. Please. 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 Peter never heard me. My lovely words were wasted on him. Yes. He was stone deaf. The pressure of the water had burst his eardrums. Well, Peter couldn't hear me, but it seems everyone else in Scudderville could. Now, well, what's past is past. It isn't bad where I am now. More like a rest home than the state asylum for the criminally insane. Of course, there are guards all around, and my activities for the time being are limited. But it has its good side. It's given me time to think. And I've arrived at certain conclusions that may interest you. My mistake was in squandering my talents upon too small an undertaking. <laughs> what a fool I was, wasting my time and efforts on a cheap little circus when there was a world to conquer. Times seem always to be ripe for a man like me, a man who can manipulate people with words. This country is filled with fools who are open to, uh, uh, suggestion, shall we say? If one knows the proper words, they'll listen. You think not? You think they won't listen to me? <laughs> Don't be silly. You've been listening, haven't you? And now this is Jeffrey Barnes again, bringing down the final curtain on tonight's presentation of Talk Them to Death, written by Walter B. Newman. Be sure to join us next week when the Mystery Theater presents Challenge to the Listener. The original music for the Mystery Theater is composed and conducted by Alexander Semler. Everett Sloan was starred, Ralph Bell and Mary Shep featured in tonight's program. Any resemblance between the names and characters used on this show and any actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. <laughs> Sometimes when we're tired, we make mountains out of molehills. We putter around till even the easiest job seems impossible. Well, if you're that tired and pale besides, your doctor may find you have a borderline anemia resulting from a ferronutritional blood deficiency. Then you need ironized yeast tablets. They help build up your strength by building up your red blood cell to get back your color, your vigor, your driving energy. Ironized yeast tablets. And now this is Dan Seymour again saying good night until next week at the same time when the Mystery Theater presents Challenge to the Listener. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. The preceding NBC program was transcribed earlier from its eastern release to be heard at this time. KFI, Los Angeles, Earl C. Anthony, Incorporated. 14 seconds to 10 p.m. Gruen watch time at Leroy's. <laughs>